This is a really short video. We're going to take a look at two different amperage settings on vertical uphill T-joint 7018 1/8. First off, 110 amps. Arc length and rod angle are two of the most important things when you're welding vertical uphill with 7018. Just as I thought, that's a little bit cold, so it's a little bit irregular looking. Let's bump it up to 120 now. All rods are made a little bit differently, and all of them have slightly different amperage ranges from the manufacturer. This one seems to be going in just a little bit hotter and flowing a little bit better. It is a little bit smoother looking. All right, now we're going to correlate the arc shots with a cut and etch test so that we can see whether or not we got penetration, or at least as much penetration as we thought we were getting. That's the 110 amp side. It got in there. There's no lack of fusion at the root. Let's take a look at the arc shot from the 120 amp here. And now let's take a look at the cut and edge side there. A little bit deeper penetration with a little bit larger weld. I've heard from quite a few structural welders recently, like iron workers, that say they're being required to use 532 7018s more and more. This is 3 8 inch thick metal. We're going to go uphill with some 532 7018. This is going to be my friend Andrew Carden doing the welding here, using a slight upside down V technique. He's using quite a bit of rod angle and the amperage is set down at the lower end of the range at 140 amps. 532 are just a little bit harder to control out of position. That one looks pretty good. Pretty even, not too crowned up. Again, it's important to hold a nice tight arc length and the rod angle can be super forgiving as long as the arc length is nice and tight. For 1 8 and smaller 7018s, I like to shoot for a 90 degree straight in angle. But with a larger electrode like this 532, it just seems to lay down a little bit flatter with quite a push angle going uphill. Again, the arc length has to be tight. You got to be steady. If you, if you shake a little bit with a 532, you're likely going to have some undercut. Another thing that helps prevent undercut is cleaning that mill scale off of the plate before you weld it. One of the mistakes that a lot of students make is stopping short of welding the entire joint out. Andrew is taking it all the way up to the very end and then some. That's a good practice. Last, the last joint we're going to do, using 532-7018, is a 5F tube to plate. We'll start off doing overhead and then it transitions to vertical uphill using about five more amps on this one. This, so this is 145 amps. And that's mainly because the plate is about three quarters of an inch thick. The tube is about three eighths of an inch thick. It takes a little bit more amperage. It can handle a little bit more amperage. Again, Andrew is using quite a bit of push angle on this going uphill. And, and again, it's very forgiving. It's provided you keep that slag pushed back behind you and you keep a nice tight arc and you have your settings somewhere close. 145 amps is not on the high end range at all on the amperage rating for 532, but it's doing a pretty good job here for that vertical up and then even when he transitions to the horizontal area right here. So he's tying into that previous crater and that's a wrap for that one. We'll throw a wire wheel on here, shine it up, take a look at it. The top and the sides look good. Well, let's check out the bottom. Here we go. Not too shabby. So that's 1 8 uphill and 532 uphill amperage settings. Hey, my online store is at weldmonger.com. That is how I pay for these videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And I would appreciate it if you'd visit weldmonger.com for your welding supplies.